And away we go. Hey guys, welcome back. Oh, what a week, huh? What a week. This is episode four, one, two, three, four, quattro of Live from the Casa. Yes, I'm live. I got some great new graphics right there with Drop Shadow. Paid a lot. I'm sure it says idiot in the house, but if it doesn't, I am ready to go. We have a great episode. I have a great episode lined up for you today. We're going to give away a charter with Red Ed from Homo Sasa Redfish. First, we're going to call Mike Ortigo and see how he is doing, see how Tackle Webs are doing, see how the whole uh, iCast thing has messed him up again. Talk to him. He's our boy. We'll talk to Mike. We'll talk to Mark Tomlinson. He's our roving reporter in Missouri and probably one of the best in the world, always constantly promoting us and doing a great job. So we'll talk to him and see how he is doing after that. I think Ron, there's my boy, Charles. Charles, you should text me and be on the show next week. Uh, after that, we'll talk to Ron Stallings from TTI Blakemore and Daiichi. After that, we'll talk to Red Ed from HomeAssassinRedfish.com, the king of scalloping. And then last but not least, we'll talk to Victor Rivera of Florida Tackle Club. So lots of new, exciting things. Now, I went early because thing one of the people has to call me. Everybody else I can call, and I can kind of put them on the, the broadcast when I want to. But with Ron, he's been a sponsor of the show. He's going to call in about 3.15. So about 3.14, whoever's on, I'm going to have to just cancel it and just apologize and make sure I'm ready for, for Ron to call in. Um, if you want to be part of this and you have a, a YouTube channel or a, ch gar a charter service or whatever, if you want to do this and you would like to, uh, to be on this and promote yourself and do whatever, just send us an email or a private message on Facebook and we'll get your information. You got to have Skype though because the software uses Skype. Um, so some, some real good news. Uh, if you didn't hear, uh, our good friend Shaw Grigsby. Uh, was uh, had some cancer surgery Tuesday. Uh, we're going to talk to Mike because he has extensive knowledge on what's going on. Um, next, if you don't know about Florida fishing products, they have an effort to get more kids into the uh, getting more kids into the outdoors, and they have an incredible program that's going to cover fifty percent of your charter. So, if you want more information, you can go to FloridaFishingProducts.com. Um, they have some uh, really, really amazing guides uh, on the on the thing, and it's called Next Generation Program. You got to take two kids with you, but the you know you can go too. Um, so it should be really good. Next, exciting news! I'm gonna there's some stuff out there already, but uh, I talked to our friends at Strike King, and we're gonna be able to see really a really cool bait called The Hybrid Hunter. Now, if you don't know Todd Castledean, he has a YouTube channel. He goes into it. But this is a new lure that's about that was supposed to come out at iCast, and there's a good chance we're going to get to see it a little bit early, and we're going to do some stuff with iCast too, so it should be a lot of fun. Next, if you have been missing Major League Fishing, they're still putting out some of the best stuff on the face of the market. Their YouTube channel is just ridiculous right now. Um, they're doing, they are just doing it right. I don't know why the hell my email just popped up over everything. So, uh, if you're not a fan of, of major league fishing, get in there, check them out and, um, you'll be surprised they're, They have, they have something going on tonight with, it's all people from, um, um, from Tennessee and Atafo and Jacob Wheeler and a bunch of uh, two other guys. They're all competing against each other. It's a really cool event. It's live. I think it starts at 4 o'clock, so after this you can watch it. It's really good. If you're if you're not a fan of Major League Fishing right now, the content that they're putting out for us as anglers is it's ridiculous. It really is that good. So check that out. They had Keith Pouchet and uh, Russ Lane yesterday. Amazing. Just amazing, amazing stuff. And of course, if you didn't notice, I got the new the, the whiteboard has new graphics and it includes drop shadows. So, oh, here we go. Finally, I can call you Tim or Timothy or Mr. Tim. It that's heavy on the Mr. Okay. Anyway, thank you, Tim. I appreciate that. And good to see you. And then last but not least, we got some news from Aaron Martins. He was out walking around yesterday. Um 
Aaron's not out of the woods yet, guys. Uh, I reached out to Aaron uh, today. He and I have texted a couple times. He has some chemotherapy that is going to go on, but he's getting his mind and his body ready for the next session of chemotherapy. So if just keep him in, his, in your prayers right now because Aaron's one of those guys. I, I kind of wanted to get on here early because one of the things that, and many people might have heard this story years ago, our good friend Ken Duke did this uh, I cast on the water up at Lake X. I don't want to promote Lake X or the Kirchman Foundation at all because I, I they they ghost me and really quite honestly we paid for urinals and urinal cakes and all sorts of stuff and I've never asked for them to do anything but I wanted to go fishing one day and they just forgot about me like I was dirt. So I don't want to I don't want to go into that. Let me say hi to Lenny. Uh, so not a big fan of them, but anyway they had it at they had it at lake x and um it was one of those amazing afternoons for me uh aaron and i have been friends for eight or nine years and we just sat and talked for literally two and a half hours um and it was one of those event one of those things that just meant the world to me if i look back at all the people that i fished with and all the people that i know and people that I've met because of this radio show in terms of the fishing community, uh, Aaron's one of those guys that I just, oh, God, I just love him so much. So um, anyway, um, he's he did look real frail. He's lost a lot of weight, to be honest, Nips. So we got to just hope that he does well. It's it's going to be, this is not going to be an easy thing for him, to be honest. Um, and... You know, it. let's just hope that he that he's good, man. That That's good. There's my boy, Walt. I went fishing with Walt years ago, yellowfin tuna fishing. I, he has a different story of the amazing amount of fish I brought in that day. Anyway, I'm joking, Walt. I hope you're doing well. So anyway, keep, keep um, Aaron in your thoughts and prayers. And really, anyone who's fighting cancer. We have a really good friend, Butch Finnegan, who does so much for our gumbo cook-off. It's ridiculous. But I'm always kind of trying to make sure that um, I have him in my thoughts and prayers because he's been battling this for for a long time. And so if you know someone that's about fight, uh, battling cancer, just make sure you tell them that you love them at this, uh, even at the worst point in time. I made sure of it. Honestly, I texted. I, I It might sound gay. and I'm not trying to be that way at all. I texted Aaron. I love you, man. And I hope you're doing well. And he, he we texted back and forth. But, you know we got to all be just be just keep them in your thoughts and prayers. So that's, that's where we go. Okay. From here, I'm going to do a quick commercial. I'm going to call Mike Ortigo real fast. Let me go over here. I'm going to play a new commercial from tackle webs actually that maybe you've seen and I'm going to call Mike too. So I'll be back in about a minute. This is Jim. Jim loves fishing boating, anything to do with time on the water, whether on the flats with his buddies, cruising around with the family, or an early morning solo session on his kayak or paddleboard. His time on the water is important and what he looks forward to after a long week of work. But no matter what boat he is on, there never seems to be a good way to keep the gear he needs organized, secure, and easy to get to in a safe place. Until one day, he found out about Tackle Webs. With Tackle Webs, Jim can easily add durable, accessible storage to any of his vessels, wherever he needs his stuff. Now, Jim enjoys stress-free days on the water, no matter how much stuff his friends and family brings. Find out how Tackle Webs can help you at TackleWebs.com. So there we have it. I'm going to bring we in. We got some bad weather. Oh, you have some bad. I'm, I'm going to bring in our, our first guest. Um, he's been, he's what I call our, our roaming reporter here in, in Missouri. His name is Mark Tomlinson. Good morning. Good afternoon, Mark. How are you, man? Doing great, doing great. Now, Can't complain. I mean, well, besides the rainy weather, you know. But what's the, what is the weather like for you up there right now? 
Uh, right now we got we got fifty one in rain. Ooh, so it's a little, a little chilly out there. Yeah, we're we're doing a lot better than you. I can tell you that we're doing a lot hey, better. Hey, hold on, hold on a second. Hold on a second. I need to uh, adjust my shirt. Just, oh, uh, just look at this! Here. Hold so, on. Oh, let me give you the yeah. applause. Look at that. <laughs> Um, now I, representing every chance I get. So let me, I'm going to move myself, my little graphic out and I'm going to move. People are saying, hello, Mark, Matt, Haffer, half, half, I don't know if half hey. says hello. Uh, we met last hello. year at the, at, uh, at, uh, where was it? We, you were Bassmaster Bass Bass classic. classic. What was your, yes. what was your thoughts on the classic? Uh, oh, I tell you what, it was amazing. I mean, just the. The access to be able to walk up to the top 50, 52 boaters or fishermen, you know, for the classic was amazing. Everyone treated you well there, very friendly. It was the best experience I've ever had so far. I couldn't uh, ask for anything better. Yeah, it, 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 that was your, your really, was that the first classic you'd ever been to? That is my very first classic, mine and Dan's, yeah. And, and the two of you... Got, I mean, you and I had texted, and I said, "Hey, look, if you make it to the classic, we'll put you down as as media people for the radio show. You can do interviews, you can do all that stuff." And oh yeah, and it was it was something else, wasn't it? Oh, it was. It, it's an experience like no other. It's uh, it's it absolutely amazing. I mean, we still talk about it today. I mean, my wife she gets tired of hearing the stories and stuff, but. It's just something that you can talk about forever. It was a great experience, and we appreciate you guys taking us down there. What well, uh, if you had to think of all of that that whole three or four or five days? What was the highlight of the whole that whole experience for you? I would have to say being in that arena when the boaters came. Yeah, it was just amazing how much support there was. It just the atmosphere was insane there. And the crowd at the launches was amazing. The first day, yeah, I mean, it was just incredible seeing that many people there in Knoxville. Yeah, it, it, biggest, uh, arguably biggest success for the classic in years, uh, and that was oh. that was, and and of course, it did help that our boy Atafo won too. Uh, oh yeah, and that I mean, <laughs> I mean, we, it, I, I remember, weren't you at? You were with us at Media Day, weren't you? Yes, 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 we were, and and or, or, no, no, uh, we missed out on that yes. day. We came the day after. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I I was down there talking to Ott quite a bit that that the mor the morning of the media day. Now you take you have yeah. a daughter and a, a grandson, and y you take them all fishing, yep. don't you? How did you get introduced into the outdoors? I got introduced to the outdoors uh, through my stepdad. I've uh, you know wrote you guys about him a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Father's Day contest and. Uh, you know, I he came into my life when I was about eight years old. Um, he's a great guy. He's you know going through a lot of personal stuff right now. He's he's got a you know some things, but you know we we all work through that. But he got me into fishing, and uh, one of the first memories I can remember was going to a private lake. We were catfishing, and I'm on a hillside, not nothing real steep, but you know I'm tagged into a catfish, and, and now I'm pulling. I'm like, hey, help, help! He's like. <laughs> He's like, dig them heels in, boy. You pull that thing out of there. And, you know, with the encouragement and what to do, you know, I got that catfish out. Ended up being a little over 10 pounds. Nice. And, uh, you know, I've been hooked ever since. Sylvia, which you've seen her online, yeah. she's been fishing since she's been in a stroller. I got pictures of that. So, and then, um, you know, I'm working on my grandson. He just turned one. So, <laughs> got a little bit of a weight, but we'll see. <laughs> now, you had your anniversary just a couple days ago. What was the key yeah, gift? Yeah. I saw the key gift the other day. What did the wife get you? Because I've got it on here, the Frog Lure Master and Purple 2. What did she get you? Uh, she got me the Doomsday Turtles. Yes. The, uh, the hot ticket, supposedly, right now. So she got me every color they had available. And I do believe that uh, Sylvia is going to throw a little uh, smackdown fishing uh, come this Friday. Nice. So. And we're taking a page out of your and Mike's book. Uh, we're doing a uh, one rod, one lure challenge oh. to each other. So she's going to pick the color of turtle, and then i got to come up with something she needs to use by Friday. It's that That's really a kind of a fun thing. I'm working on a couple videos. I'm working on, of all things, a frog video. I think I kind of told 
you off camera about it, uh, off this thing, not for everyone yeah. to know. Uh, but uh, I've been working. I've been I've been using a new frog from Mega Bass that I I can't wait to show everyone the closer look. But I got a lot more work to get to get at it. But uh, you, you love frog fishing, don't you? Oh yeah, frogs are everything. I when I was down at the classic, went to the uh, expo, got uh, into the Livingston lure uh, booth, and I bought every top water frog they had. Yeah. So and. Uh, <laughs> They've been great. Yeah, frogs are everything. Top water explosions are phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. You need to start filming them, though. You could film them, and I could put yeah, them on the that, channel. Will do. I can get into that. Yeah, yeah that, that would be Definitely. great. So uh, you, you guys have this challenge this weekend. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, you're you're on the front lines of this this whole virus pandemic almost too. How is this hurting your fishing, and how is it? How is the family during this whole craziness? Uh, the family's been doing great. Uh, my wife has been able to work from home, which is great. She's a foster care case manager. She's a lead case worker. So she's having to do everything from home, which has been a blessing. And like some, you know, a lot of people, uh, they're not, you know, been able to go back to work because they've shut down or anything. Uh, both my daughters are being able to work at their jobs. I've had my job at the hospital working you know, with no issues at all. Everybody's staying healthy. We're following precautions and everything. As far as far as fishing goes, we've had no shutdowns here. They shut the state parks down, mm -hmm. but to my knowledge, we still have access to rivers and you know uh, major lakes and such. I have uh, five lakes in my subdivision, and uh, that, that's where we, uh, we do a majority of our fishing. But we're always looking for new territory to throw challenges down. Yeah, yeah, me too. I've been I'm on this this kick with I've got three or four places. I got one place that is frog central right now. I mean, every time a frog hits the water, oh. I get blown up on. <laughs> um, but it, you know, yeah. It's, and congratulations on getting back to Lake EA. Oh gosh, man! Uh, I can't. <laughs> I, I don't even think that video does the justice of how. Like I, I think actually I was so excited that I started. I actually think I fished too fast. Like I was like, right, overthinking things and. And really, we have we've had like you know here in Florida, it gets like the this time of year, it starts to rain every afternoon, right. and we're not getting any rain right now. So Lake EA was down probably three or four feet. There's a a, a place right around the sh right around the corner from me that Thomas and I go and fish that I don't film at all because I don't want anyone to know about it, and uh, it's down right. close to <laughs> ten or twelve feet. So oh wow, um, you know it's we need some rain. But, you know, I'm just happy that we're trying to stay as healthy as we are, too. So um, oh, that, that's what it is. Well, I wanted you – if I don't say it enough, I hope you know this. I really hope you know this. Thank you for everything that you do for the radio show. You're like, you're like family oh. to us, and we, we appreciate it more than anything. Well, thank you very much, and I, I do my best. I love this show. I love that family. And uh, I'm going to do everything I can to keep promoting you guys. I do it on a daily basis. I talk about it constantly at work. And when I'm out, I make myself little bitty business cards. You yeah. know, if I know anyone that's interested in fishing, you know, introduce them to the show. Learn something, watch, and, you know, enjoy it. Yeah. It's, uh, it's been great since I've been following you guys. I think I'm going on three, four years now of following you guys. And uh, it's been great ever since. And real quick before we get off here, I just want to say thank you to everybody, friends and family. Uh, followers for getting us to 4,000 yeah. plus on YouTube channel. Yeah. That, yeah. That, it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're, and we're working on it, working on that next thousand. Uh, we're, we're, you know, we're doing, yep. we're, we can only do so much. That's, that's the whole thing. I'm trying to put out oh. different stuff and, right. and I'm trying to have fun with it. So, and, and really with hammer and I doing the, the new videos, we actually fit, we finished the first Genesis of a fishery on Saturday and uh, which will probably come out here fairly soon in the next week or so. I got to edit it, and then right. Mike doing his thing. It's we we got lots of more, lots of great content that's about to flood the YouTube channel. So it it'll be a lot of fun. So tell yeah. Sylvia, tell your wife, tell your grandson that I said hello. And again, thank you for everything you do, man. Will do. We appreciate it. Uh, definitely. And just one more, real quick. If we could uh, thoughts and prayers for Dan. Uh, unfortunately, he's going to be. He's on overseas here. here He's, uh, in huh? Dan's on here. I see oh, him right there here. There he is. All right. Well, you know what? 
Hey, Dan, uh, he's getting ready to go overseas for a year. It's going to be tough missing that guy. We do a lot of fishing together. And, uh, yeah, just thoughts and prayer for his safety whenever he has to leave uh, yeah. July, August. Yeah, our so. thoughts and prayers are always to, to Dan. And th- and I we thank him for his service, too. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, he says, I'm here. I'm posting yep. that on. Okay, dude, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'll talk to you soon. And, and congrats. Yeah. happy anniversary again, and thank you very much. Thank you. Later. Thank you very much, Steve, and uh, thank you, everybody. Later, brother. Well, Later. There, we have uh, – there was uh, Mark Tomlinson, great dude, one of the best in the world. I'm going to call Mike right now. He has some news that we can – I'm going to oh, – wait a minute. Let me put a little commercial in here for Optima Batteries. Or you want to – I'm going to put the Diego su- sunglasses commercial in here, and then I'll call Mike during the break. <laughs> Here we have him, Captain Mike. How are you, brother? Good morning, afternoon, whatever. Hello. Hold on. Quarantine day, 45,600. <laughs> Quarantine day of hell. How are you, man? Doing all right, man. How are you? How are you doing this week? Uh, the sinus infection's like 95% gone. You sound better. I, do, I, I, feel, I do feel a lot better. I mean, I still get a cough like every once in a while, but... You know, it, it is what it is. That must freak people out at the store. Oh, yeah. They love me coughing. They love me coughing on them. Vampire. Yeah. The dab. Dab. Yeah, dab. Um, everyone's saying hello. Now, you had uh, – I was talking about Shaw earlier. You actually talked to – tell us – you had some information on Shaw and the surgery he had yesterday. Tell us what happened. Yeah, he put it out on Facebook. He was going uh, on his Facebook page. He had, uh, had found a – some cancer on the kidney. Yeah. So he was doing, he was having kidney surgery yesterday morning. And then I hadn't heard anything by the afternoon. So I reached out to Polly, his wife, and just to see how he was doing. And, and she said that everything went well. He did very well. And the surgery went well. So he was recovering and hi, Coral. Hi, hi. beautiful. Hi. So, <laughs> and that was that. So good news from that end, you know, yeah. and then, you know, we see, Aaron's still, you know, having to deal with what he has to deal with, but yeah, we still we know Aaron's fighting, and uh, he, you know he's going to. That get guy's his... in great shape, man. He oh, runs yeah. all the time. Remember, he was running before tournaments and yeah. practice days, <laughs> running five miles, and so if anybody can whoop it, it'd be Aaron. You know. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. So you know, tackle webs. Now we have you. You've had a week, or what has it been two weeks since we heard about iCast. What uh, what's been the the common what what's been the thought process after after not having this this huge uh, this huge event for y'all? Yeah, not having ICAST is a is a bummer, but we kind of expected it, I guess. Yeah, we kind of planned for it. the for the best, even though we had a lot of good things planned and and money already already invested in it. But um, yeah, the interesting thing would be what what's going to happen in the industry. They're supposed to do some kind of online thing. Mm-hmm. You know, our guys going to really launch what they, you know, what's the new product showcase going to look like? How are the voting going to be handled? Is that going to be a thing that even, you know, yeah, something that's going to be, you know, needed? Is the public going to be consuming it? Is it just going to be industry? Yeah. Is it just um, wholesalers? Is it retailers? Who is it? The buyers? Is it the dealers? I mean, it's going to be an interesting aspect. We definitely going to lose the marketing side of that live event. And uh, a lot of small businesses won't be around for 2021. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what what comes out of it. So of course, hopefully, we're going to get some cool products that we find, and maybe we can get some highlights straight to the consumer. And really, that's the that's the big edge of this industry. Now that I can see, is uh, everybody is investing in their technology, their websites, they're yeah. revamping things, and it's going to be something that. It's really going to be taking a hit. A lot of distributors and stuff like that, I believe. Yeah. Because there's going to be so much direct, and a lot of these advertising too. 
So yeah, it's, it's going to be tough. It's going to be a different year. This, 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 the end of this year and the beginning of next year, it'll be fun to see, not really fun. It'll be interesting to see where, how people launch things. And like you and I are, have already talked, there's a, some goals that we have planned that hopefully we can do. And I know there's uh, several companies that have already reached out to me to say, Hey, we, we'd, we'd really like to do this or that with you. So we'll have some stuff coming up. And I, I, I talked to even strike King today, about their new, uh, they have a new hybrid bait that's coming out that I think we're going to, it's already been, it's not been launched, but people have seen it, but I think we're going to get quite a few of them to talk about and to use before anyone else. And that's going to be a necessity for companies that are trying to get product out. Yeah. And, you know, you got to have some new fresh stuff coming out in 2021, 2022. And, you know, we shifted gears. I mean, I'll be honest. You know, we definitely are shifting gears from what we were originally planned, but it is what it is. You got to you got to turn right man, yeah. and, and adjust with the times. Yeah. So, you know, we'll, we'll see how things come out. I mean, retail sales, especially in the sporting goods, was down over 25 percent. Yeah, that's unbelievable. Um, in the last quarter. So and this quarter is our, you know, for boating and marine. This is, you know, Q2, Q3, which is spring, summertime. Mm hmm. That's it, man. This is our season, and yeah. we're taking the hit right now on the chin. And we'll see. You know, we've got the state of Florida starting to try to open up. A lot of guy companies, you know, states are trying to open up some. Texas, and those are big hubs. Florida, Texas, you know, the Carolinas, yeah. um, you know, that the Gulf Coast. That's going to all, you know, if they can open things up, open in marinas again, hopefully that'll, you know, keep our industry going. And and uh, the, the funny thing will be is how, you know, to see how, everybody launches their new products yeah yeah i'm looking forward to seeing how it works because i know icast really isn't meant for the consumer it's meant for the retailer so hopefully we can somehow position ourselves in the middle of that and allow people to come on here have the product in hand show us it talk about it and we'll see how it goes from there there's a lot of ideas i've got them they're all my brain is going non-stop lately it'll be a necessary evil i guess in the grand scheme of things for companies to get out you know and, and even if you did it here it's you know how many products can you really show without it being you know monotonous yeah. Yeah. so you know you got to pick your select few you've got to shift your gears the companies but this is going to be you know this is where people are going to consume the product and now with stores being closed and how many people are even allowed in they're counting you if you're walking in the grocery yeah. store and home depot you're standing in line uh the bait shops are having issues supply lines are all choked up you know from around the globe so you know it's uh it's an interesting era we're going to go into and i, I mean i think it's probably going to change and accelerate things that we we're predicting um yeah. in the industry well what because, makes well it's great to know that you know if you if people have empty shelves tackle webs can fill that you're completely 100 percent made in america and yeah. that's the best thing about what you have going on yeah for sure but we're made, yeah, made in America. We're still filling orders. We're still getting a lot of orders in. But I, I've talked to other people in the industry, and they're doing very well. Yeah, you were telling and, us um, an artist was killing it. Yeah, Eric Estrada. I talked to him yesterday. He's got a special line of his art and you know apparel and stuff like that. He said he's doing better than he's done in, in a long time. Direct to consumer, people staying at home, using the internet more than ever. Yeah, people streaming like this. Yeah, this is the way to you know be able to reach out and touch uh the consumer directly and then you don't have you know in all reality you don't have the margins that are getting beat up with going through a dealer in the exactly. market you're, you're getting and you get, so you'll see a lot of people rolling out better packages cooler deals you know websites are going to be revamped and that's without not even touching our product mm -hmm. um everybody's shifting to you know uh seller fulfilled where you're not taking advantage of your prime and amazon because they're just bottleneck and everything for essential products yeah so you you know that that beast itself amazon a lot yeah. of products aren't there yeah. that you could potentially be you know reaching out to the consumers if they ever you know get, get. well hopefully we can continue doing these things uh always a fear how much can they eat up yeah uh hammer said he's having a great quarter already on and he wants by the way I should mention on your project, the project boat, I've got an electrician and some, and hammer said he wants to donate things to, too. So awesome. we will, we need awesome. to, we'll start working on that fairly soon. 
Uh, I have, yeah, I've been on the laundry list. Yeah. Ron is calling in next. Uh, nice. So he's texting me right now. So I'm going to call ask, call him. Ask him about hiring me. I'm going to. That's my Pro first Shop question. I'm going to. That's the first question. So uh, we, one of these shows we got to do face-to-face in the same thing and just do the whole show together here soon. Hopefully soon. We'll yeah, see how I mean, this you, know, you can take my temperature, dude. I, you know. <laughs> I'm not an, I have to do it anyway. I play though. college ball. I'm not afraid to get naked in front of a man. I am. So. I can't do that. I can't even pee in front of you. <laughs> You're a timid tinkler. I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, right, next man. next uh, Wednesday, you're you're the first person on again. All right. Okay, we'll dude. Thank shot. you, man. Later, All right, bro. buddy. Tell Ron to say hello. I will. See you. That's our boy, Mike Ortigo. Let me put a commercial on, and I'm going to call Ron real fast. Let me hit cancel over here. Our next commercial is from Shimano, and while I'm doing that, I'm going to call Ron. Introducing Shimano DC Braking. Digital control will provide trouble-free casting to all anglers. DC will greatly improve the casting and therefore the fishing experience for anglers of all skill levels. Make long, accurate casts regardless of wind speed or direction. DC Brake provides trouble-free casting with a wide range of lures by simply adjusting the external dial. Even challenging casts are now within reach for all anglers. The newest innovation in braking systems, Shimano DC Brake. Our next guest is our boy from Daiichi, True Turn, all sorts of stuff. He's the best in the world, Ron Stallings. How are you, man? Man, I'm awake. How y'all doing? I, I'm awake too, barely. I should say that. Barely <laughs> awake. Hope y'all are staying safe. Yes. I mean, before we get into it, how uh, how are how is the factory and how's the family doing with this whole coronavirus? Well, we're uh, we're building and shipping. Uh, we're lucky to be in a in a smaller town where our uh, infestation of the virus is not so large. Mm-hmm. So the governor deemed us um, necessary or okay to stay open. But we have a we have a, a very large facility here, and we only have thirteen people working in here. Oh, okay, we have some in production, some in shipping, and you know the rest of the you know finance and data services and sales. You know, so we're spread out. I mean, there's no there's nobody even close to being 20 feet together i mean we're we're very far apart we use uh we use our normal social distancing washing our hands and and wearing masks and and doing our thing the room i'm in right now is our conference room and there's really this it's a large room so there's really nothing to worry about for me in here that's that's good to hear uh i i but i need to know this question now you were in charge of hiring captain mike ortigo what, 20 years ago at Bass Pro Shops? How, yeah, how, yeah. Were, was there a possibility that you weren't going to hire him? No, I, I don't think so. Mike Mike came in, sat down, and, and I did the interview with him. And uh, I had a very rigorous test that I asked questions on, salt, fresh, rigging, mm. all kinds of stuff. And Mike answered him 100%. Of course, uh, he's a he's a, a superb angler and a good friend, and uh, I hired him right then and made him an assistant manager uh, quite soon after that. He was a he was a hell of an employee and a, and a hell of a good friend, and and uh, I've always had a lot of love for that boy. He's a good man. Yeah, he's a good he's a good dude. That, he, he he helps the show so much. It's not even funny. I mean, I miss I miss seeing him and and seeing his success with tackle webs is just the best thing in the whole world too. Oh yeah, tackle webs is huge, man. I I try to promote that for him as much as I can, and and uh, I've got him a couple of pro staff people on there, and in, in different aspects of fishing, walleye and crappie and whatnot, and catfish, and and um, he's he's done very very well for himself. Uh, he's a he's a hell of a good guy, man. I've I've always liked Mike, and and we've always gotten along very well, and yeah. and uh, he's uh, he's he's. 
he's, he's one of those people you want to call a brother. He is. He's like a brother. He's like one of my closest friends, and I call him a brother all the time. Yeah. Um, for people who don't know, how did you get in? In how did you get introduced into the outdoors? Well, uh, I grew up in Orlando, yeah. down in the Conway district, and um, my uh, when I was seven years old, my parents opened up a tackle store on Michigan Street called Tim's Tackle Box, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Yep. And um, I grew up in the industry uh, basically until I was 18 years old. Then I went in the military for 11 years and got to travel the world and see some good stuff and some bad stuff at the same time. But I got to fish all over the world, too, in the Orient and Europe and whatnot. And and uh, when I got out of the military, I went right back to the store. My dad asked me to come back. And um, I stayed there uh, as long as I could. But um, my ex-wife got a pr- double promotion down to Fort Myers. And I moved down there and, and worked in Fort Myers at a place called the Bait Box on Sanibel Island. Yes. And I worked there for, for a long time and um, then had to move back to Orlando. I left my ex-wife down in Fort Myers, moved back to Orlando and basically worked in the store until my father passed away and I sold the store and the inventory and the property and, and let my mom retire. And, um, I moved back to Orlando about a year later and, uh, actually wound up, uh, working as a, the fishing manager for Orlando Bass Pro and yeah. as one of the, one of the best experiences of my life was working there. It was, a it was, a we had a great crew. We had knowledgeable crew. We had the lower lowest turnover rate of employees in our department, department and company wide. Um, we selected our people very, very stringent and um, very knowledgeable. Uh, salt and fresh water uh, from bluegill to blue marlin. I had everybody intact and in place, and they knew what they were doing. And Mike was a huge, huge part of that. Yeah. Now, when did you guys? When did you and the family decide to get into the Road Runner, Daiichi True Turn, and all the other great? products that you guys have well my brother was actually a rep in in north carolina living in north carolina he was a rep for the tim hunter group and uh one of the lines that he repped was true turn and after they after they found out tj's um abilities to to sell and create uh they asked him to come permanently with uh, true turn daiichi and blakemore well blakemore wasn't there at the time and at the time I was working at Bass Pro, I had uh, I had broke my back and uh, had had some had some serious issues, and didn't want to live in Orlando anymore because it was getting a little little crazy. It's hell. And I could yeah I couldn't leave my ex wife at, at home and and by herself when I wanted to go fishing or hunting because I didn't feel safe. So we wanted to move and we went back down to Fort Myers and checked it out and it got even crazier down there, mm-hmm. and. Um, uh, we decided to come up here. I hadn't, I hadn't been anywhere near my brother for almost 15 years, except seeing him, you know, maybe once a year or twice a year at holidays and family events. But, uh, so we decided to move up here to Wetumpka. My ex-wife got a killer job right off the giddy up and I was standing there waiting on my furniture to be, to be delivered. And the president of this company, Wes Campbell, he, uh, he called my cell and said, Hey man, uh, can you come in and talk to us? So I came in and he basically, he and his brother said, uh, look, we're fixed to uh, purchase Blakemore and we need some help. We'd love for you to come on. And I came on and my brother and I worked together side by side yeah. all the time, creating and packaging and, 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 and playing and fishing and, <laughs> you know, hunting and whatever else we could do. Yeah. And, uh, now that he's gone, um, uh, I've taken over his job as well as in PR marketing yeah. and design, lure design, hook design, packaging, cataloging, um, inventory. Uh, got a lot of hats, man, yeah. but I wouldn't give it up for the world, man. I know God's put me in a, in a spot where I need to be and where I belong. And, and I'm happy to, to serve in that capacity, both for the company and for God. Yeah. I, I know that, you know, I only use your hooks. I oh yeah. yeah. Ev- there's if I do a video, it's it's Daiichi and Daiichi only. I know Absolutely. people send me send me other crap. They don't get they go they go in the the, the giveaway thing. Daiichi <laughs> yeah. makes the best hooks in my opinion on the market. I don't think oh, there's, I, I, I don't I, think there's I, any, any anyone close. Even. Yeah, it, 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 it's wonderful the the road runners, but more importantly. What you guys do for, like, the youth and for kids fishing, I don't think you guys get enough credit for. I mean, every time we need something for 
a Hook Kids on Fishing event, or heaven forbid you should get Tom. You know, Wes used to send Thomas a box of lures every year that would make me mental. Uh, <laughs> because I'd be like, why does why is he sending all this? We have this, but I know how I know how, you guys are the most generous company I've ever met in in my in this industry. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. One of the things that we we um, we value is we value our future. And when you when you get out on the water or out in the woods, you just don't see as much youth as you want. And that's the future of our sport. And anything we can do to promote that is uh, is high on our list. We 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 like to we like to work with kids. Um, we like to to help youth. Uh, the basically the the underprivileged youth, uh, 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 children that are that are are, are handicapped, disabled, mm-hmm. um, uh, Boy Scouts, uh, yeah. all the fishing teams in, in high schools and colleges. Um, the working with the outdoor rider groups that I work with, uh, we engage with a lot of a lot of uh, uh, future outdoor riders and bring them into the fold. But if you're if you want something sustainable as far as our industry goes, it's, it's going to have to be, it's going to have to be children. And no matter how old they are, they could be three or 13 or 23. It doesn't matter if you get them out in the outdoors. uh, Our, our, our industry is going to be sustainable. Back in 1976, the industry did a, a study and kids that were, taught to fish before the age of seven. I, I remember they, seeing this. Yes. They, they would stop fishing during adolescence when they're dating boys and girls and the hormones go berserk and yeah. whatnot. When they hit 17 or 18, they'll pick a rod and reel or a gun back up and go fishing or hunting. Yes. And that's, that's kind of what we're trying to lean into. It's a, it's a, it's not, not really a catch 22, but there are, there are, other things that children really get into, obviously video games and their friends and whatnot. But a family, a family member that is an iconic outdoor person can bring multiple children into the, into the fold. Yes. And if we do that, if you do, if you, if, if one adult, a mom or a dad takes their kid fishing and the kids, two good friends, mommy and daddy of the other two kids are going to want to know, Hey, this kid's kid's not at home as much anymore. He's out fishing. He's out hunting. He's out having fun with his friends and other families. I need to get involved too. Then that just, it's a domino effect. It just keeps building and building and building. That's what we're going after. And that's why we promote and, and give as much as we can to children. And, uh, also our, obviously we give a, just as much to, to the warriors. Yeah. And that's something, obviously, uh, you can probably tell that's something really close to my heart. Yes, I lost I a lot of friends overseas, and and um, and and I know I know what they need. I yes. understand what they need. And we have we have a kayak division, we have a saltwater division, we have a freshwater division that has four other divisions based on species of wounded warriors, and uh, we support all that and just about anything to do with the church. Yeah. Uh, we we definitely do that. Yeah, I, I just. I can't say thank you enough from, you know, from the show point, but just from all the people I know that use that you've you've donated to and been part of the building of the youth fishing. Uh, I don't think you get enough credit for it. And and I wanted, I know from like Butch, Finnegan from uh, from the Gumbo Wars and Boudreaux yep. and Mike and all of us, and Tom Van Horn, you know, from mm-hmm. all the guys at FOA. I mean, all yep. those people. Sure. We all thank you for everything that you've done and your company does continuously for our youth fishing because we have to. I mean, you know, you know Thomas. He's in oh, the other yeah. room right now, yelling. I can hear him through the wall, yelling and screaming on Fortnite. But come <laughs> come five o'clock, his ass is going to be out fishing with me because he needs. You know, you got to do something outside. You, you, we can't. Yeah. We can't let these kids continue on these iPads and everything else. Um, we need to well, get them in one the outdoors. Thing I, one thing I will mention, um, and it's and it's kind of an odd sort if you think about it, um, and it's kind of strange, but uh, my wife has multiple sclerosis, mm-hmm. and that is that is from a lack of vitamin D deficiency. Oh, I didn't know. And that. your best source, the best source of vitamin D, the sun. 
what God created. What God created, man. If you you get out there in the sun, um, you know that that's what I think. That's what everybody needs. I mean, vitamin D not only does it does it help you with your immune system in your body, but it it's 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 almost an excuse to get outside. Yeah, you know you need it. You yes. know you got to have it. And uh, um, vitamin D is very important. I do want to come back to one thing though. Um, I know you know Wes's wife Carrie. She's yes. our she's our big wig here. Yes, she was actually. I think uh, I have, she's one of the few people I give a hug to when I see y'all. Oh yeah, she's the best. Yeah, love her. To death. She's like a sister to me. Yeah. Um. She she was actually for twenty five years. She was president of the Future Fisherman Foundation. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, and she 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 worked with. Uh, you remember who Tom Bedell is, right? Yeah, yeah, I know Tom. She worked with Tom Bedell to create this, and she was the president for twenty five years. That's another reason why we we hammer on on helping children uh, get out there fishing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you guys you guys really are the best. I, I can't thank you yeah. enough. I know Thomas thanks you. I know every every, every well, this is going to be a weird year because we're not going to see at iCast. I know. How I was I was wanting that dinner, man. <laughs> I think I might drive up to the up there and we'll go to a steak dinner or something because I'd like to see yeah. the whole the whole thing. Um, speaking of iCast, uh, was there any new products that you were going to launch this year that we that maybe well you don't have to talk about them now, but was there new products coming out for the whole? Yeah, product? actually, actually, there's um, there's we have uh, a new line of hooks for yes. diet. Uh, these are these are. Um, this is a saltwater version. This is not the one you're probably thinking of. Oh, okay. Of. I know. This is a new line. Okay. This is a. This is a. This is going to be what we call heavy metal. Okay. Nice. Yeah. And then we have the other one. It's called one. is called monster metal. Um, are you familiar with uh, uh, Captain James Marco Markovitz? I don't know uh, James. Goliath fishing on. Oh, the Goliath CGS fishing. Sports? Yes. Okay. That's. Well, we specifically made this hook, one of these hooks for him, and it's called Monster Metal, and it's a 20 alt circle. A 20? A 20 alt. Like, that would, would like, be like would, that. You want to see one? Do you have one nearby? I got one right there. Stand okay, by for it. a second. Hold on. And I can tell you right now that the uh, this is going to be this is going to be a big deal for us. Um, and uh, <clears throat> we're also... We're also working on a roadrunner that I can't talk about right now. Hopefully, but, I'll get to uh, see that soon. Then, yeah, you'll be able to see it here soon. Uh, let's see. Okay, so here's the twenty alt. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Shut that! That literally looks like the size of your head, Ron. It does. <laughs> I got my head right in the middle of it. <laughs> That's the monster metal. But the other sizes, the 14, 16, and 18, is going to be called the heavy metal. Okay. And, you, and you know, you, you obviously know why I named it that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the heavy metal fan. Oh, yeah. Love my metal, man. Yeah. But, you yeah, and that's Patrick Sabeel. Oh, yeah. Yeah, me and Patrick had a good time at FOA last year. Yeah, we, yeah, we had a big time. <laughs> I can yeah. imagine. I on Daytona Beach, man. We had a ball. So... But, uh, yeah, but we do have a, a new Roadrunner coming out. Um it's going to be something that can hit both sides of the coasts okay. of the of the nation, but in the regions of region of Florida, South Texas, um, Southern Arizona, there, it's not going to be as prominent right in that area. But above that, and to the west of the Mississippi River, it's going to be huge. Well, so hopefully, when that is released, maybe we can do another video and we can. Show the show the the Roadrunner and do sure. like some consumer, you know, some something like this to have people on YouTube and Facebook see the new Roadrunners. We'd love to do that sure. with you for sure. Love to do it, man. I'd be more than happy to to do a promotion with you guys and maybe send like you know twenty five or thirty of these things to a winner. Yeah, that would be that would be even wonder more wonderful. That would be I'd great. Love, I'd love to do it. We maybe that's something we can do in December. Yeah, we'll 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 talk about it here. You and I will talk. You know. Our oh yeah. yeah, no problem. Yeah, no well, problem. I I just have to say thank you for being on here with us. Thank you for everything you do for the show. Thank you for everything you do for the kids. Uh, you know we love you like a brother, and we we wish you and your family and the whole Daiichi True Turn uh, family the best, and that we love you and God. Hope that God continues to bless you guys. 
Well, thank you so much, and and uh, uh, the same to you guys, man. I know I know you guys are are highly blessed and highly challenged at the same time, yeah. and I, I understand that. And uh, we love you guys like family, man. We yeah. just we appreciate everything you do, and and uh, you got a you got a killer show and and a killer group of people. And um, Boudreaux sends me the winners every week. We Not get them out the same day he sends them to us, yeah. and. Uh, we knock it out. We're happy and proud to do it, especially, especially when he puts a little note next to the person's name and says, kid. "This is a, this is a kid that loves to bluegill fish or yes. something." That that just makes my whole day, man. It's just great. I just yeah. absolutely love it, man. And uh, we thank you for what you do. And as always, if you need anything from us, just let us know. We'll be more than happy to help in any way we can. Yeah, I appreciate that. Okay. Well, everyone, go to True Turn Daiichi. Check them out. They make the best, sharpest hooks on the planet. It's the only hook I use. In every video you've ever seen, every closer look, everything is always a Daiichi hook. If it isn't Daiichi, I'm not using it. And that Amen. is the truth. Ron, awesome. thank you very much, and we'll talk to you soon, bro, okay? All right. See you, buddy. Have thank a good you. one. Thank you. You too. Later, bro. See you. The best. And I'm not – Jesus, it figures now. I can't figure this out. The best in the whole world, Ron Stallings. Guys, honestly, if you're if you're out there and uh, you're looking for hooks, check out Daiichi, Daiichi, True Turn, and everything that they put out. Okay, we have a little commercial here. I'm going to put up a, a video of all things of Shaw Grigsby of a video that Mike and I filmed like eight years ago before Tackle Webs even blew up. But while I'm doing that, I'm going to uh, call our boy Red Ed. Let me get everything on this end going first. Red Ed. I'm going to call Red Ed, but we'll be back right here in like 30 seconds. In 1984, I turned pro. In 1986, I qualified for my first Bassmaster Classic. In the 30 years as a bass professional, I've seen things come and go. In that time, I've won my share of battles. You think you have bass thumb? <laughs> I've got battle scars. I'm Shaw Grigsby Jr. with Tackle Webs. Clear the deck for battle. Well, I'm currently trying to get a hold of Red Ed. It's ringing on that end and making me mental inside my headphones. Um, so hopefully we can get a hold of Red Ed from Homo Sasa Redfish. He's going to give away that charter for that scallop charter, which should be quite fun. Um, I think we got him here in a second. Dude, how... Oh, look. Hold on. Hold on. Look at there. You have your own graphics? What is up with that? Yeah, you like that? <laughs> hold on. Let me put your... Uh, red. Oh, yeah. Put the mask on. Put the mask on. <laughs> hold on. Let me give you applause. Red Ed. <laughs> Homosassaredfish.com. Live from the Sassa. Live from the Sassa. How are you, man? I'm doing good, Steve. How are you doing? Okay, you're going to have to take that mask off. <laughs> hey, when I wear that mask in the store, there's no problem with social distancing. Yeah, yeah. I, you want to know what I do? I wear like a, a hook, you know, mask, like the one I do when I, I wear when I go fishing with you. Yeah. And, and people like look at me like I'm crazy. And I'm like, look, it's better than nothing. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I, if I don't have that one on, I'll wear this one. Oh, yeah, the, that's a good one. You're Zuri, too. Yeah. Uh, lots of people saying hello, uh, hello to you. So, hello to everybody. Uh, tell everybody a little bit about yourself. How did you get introduced into the outdoors? Oh, geez. Uh, it started actually when I was a kid with my dad. Uh, there's a classic, classic picture on Facebook of me with my first boat and, uh, I must be four or five years old. So uh, in Rockaway Beach, you can see the bridge in the background. It's, it's a pretty cool classic shot. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Now, when did you start guiding? Was it How long ago have you been guiding? Uh, it's just about close to 15 years now. Yeah. I, I procrastinated a while on getting my license, but uh, I've been fishing here in the Citrus County area since 1981, so a long time. Started actually when I lived over in Orlando. I used to come over and fish here. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to make day trips over to Chaz, Chaz Wiska, and fish with uh, a true legend, Captain Bill Hope. Yeah. Now you're guiding and, and arguably the king of scallops. 
the undisputed undisputed king, king of scallops. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, it's uh, that, that's that's become an unbelievable, great, great family tradition. Fun during the summer, as you know, uh, you've been over three, four, four times maybe. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's too bad the weather got us last year. You need to come back with uh, Thomas this year. Cause yeah. Surely ready to do it. Oh yeah, and, and and we had we had always discussed. Let's bring Thomas. We've been saying it for years. Yeah. Um, but we were. I I don't know if really you want to know that Ed. We shouldn't have any problem worrying. We shouldn't have worried about Thomas three years ago swimming, but we did. True. And now now he's the uh, almost he's pretty much a state champion in in some of the stuff. So. Hey. Maybe we can sit in the boat. And let him. Get <laughs> That's what we boat. should do. Just let it. <laughs> just let him go out like two miles and let him drift back. <laughs> that would be awesome. Uh, right. Now uh, we should say Redhead is donating, is giving away a charter today, a four-hour charter, scallop charter. Once all this craziness has gone by, how is this craziness? Has this craziness affected your your fishing charters? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, with the social distance. And then my boat's a 24-foot boat. By uh, the way, let me just say, you have a beautiful boat. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I can't believe it's, it's just old. I, I got that boat in 2013. I can't believe I've had it that oh. long. Uh, young boats up in English, they make a great, great boat. I tell people all the time, it's not a Mercedes, it's a Bentley. It's it really, is. You know, uh, but... Yeah, I've, I've not been not been interested in doing any charters because of what's happening. Uh, you know, trying to stay my distance from people as much as I can. Hopefully, this all comes to an end soon, and we can get back, you know, doing charters. Uh, it hasn't stopped us from fishing. Uh, Nadine and I have been out quite often uh, this time of the year, and as you and and many of the listeners know from previous years being on the show. Uh, you know, spring has sprung, the uh, spring smorgasbord is going on, and everything is hungry and eaten. And uh, I always, uh, and it's, again, you know this, uh, come May, I can't stop thinking about Kobe. I know. We, I get, do you realize you, how much you and I talk about Kobe at the end of, at the end of every April throughout yeah. May? It's all yeah. you and I talk about. We don't talk about anything else yeah, other than we do talk about Nadine and your cooking. <laughs> yeah, well we got everybody's got to eat you know? I, uh, no, I mean <laughs> uh, but yeah they actually arrived a little early this year because the weather's been so warm so uh they they came a little early but we were out yesterday we uh and again i tell people that kobe fishing is kind of like deer hunting sitting in the tree stand you got to be in the right place in the right time when they mm -hmm. come by and it wasn't our turn yesterday but one of my good friends, Captain Jody, he uh, did put a 35 and a half inch cobia in the boat yesterday. That's unbelievable. And if if you're not aware, on March 25th, they changed the limit on cobia from 33 to 36. Oh, so I didn't know that. Yesterday was a half inch short. Oh. It's, it's now 36 to the fork. But uh, Captain Jody, he's the cobia whisperer, man. If he's on the boat, they just swim right up to the boat, and uh, Jody and his son Wes in that Kobe tournament a few years ago. I think they took second and third in the tournament. Uh, so Jody and I talk a lot. Uh, he went south yesterday. I went north, and uh, he was lucky enough to find them. One of my other neighbors did keep, get a keeper yesterday, and last week a friend uh, while spear fishing free diving shot a sixty-one pound Kobe. That is unbelievable. That's a monster fish, and uh, it took him for the Sassy Sleigh ride. He was getting yeah. pulled down quite a bit. Man. That's that's uh, awesome. Yeah, sixty-one pounds is a nice fish. It, it's a hog. Well, uh, is is with this whole virus thing? Is this going to affect your scallop charters? Because I mean, when does scallop season start? Uh, scallop season opens July first. So praise to the Lord that it's over by then. Uh, we're actually starting to book charters again. Uh, you know, I think people have got cabin fever so bad that they're ready to get out and ready to get out in the open air. And again, as June. Yeah, the. the I did just a few minutes ago, got another deposit for a charter on July 31st. So hopefully we're good to go come July. 
And now, if you if you're just seeing this and and don't know, you have a whole group of guides that you work together with, and you can take anyone out from like a couple people to like a serious party, correct? Yes, yeah. We had one group. Uh, I think it was thirty folks. Um, uh, the mayor Mark from uh, Palm Beach Gardens brought a big group up a couple of years ago. And the reason I put this hat on, Mel Eakley, Captain Mel, is one of the captains in our association. Oh, nice. And he's going to be, he's going to be the next sheriff here in Citrus County. So uh, yeah. maybe you get lucky to go yeah, out and I'll, Send me sheriff. a hat. I'll wear it every week for you. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll trade you that for a tackle whip hat. I don't oh. have one of those. Oh, you want to know what? Hold on. Hold on. I knew you had one. I saw you wearing it. <laughs> that one is not uh I think you want to I've got you set. I I I I I know we have some tackle webs hats coming in. Yeah, and the one Mike was just wearing was real nice too. That's called the Icon hat by the way. Oh yeah. I don't think there's many of those ones left. We uh Mike ordered like you know with iCast not being here. Mike we had a big humongous plan for uh for tackle webs and introducing some new products and stuff like that so i think they're gonna some products uh some accessories that mike has planned is gonna be released here soon maybe on this whole thing and then um we'll have uh, we'll wait another year before some of the other stuff is is released so well, there's some cool things that we can we'll be able to share here soon yeah, on, on the scale of trips, um, we do two trips a day from 7 to 11 and 12 to 4. And as you just said, regardless of the size of your party, we can handle them all. We've had days where we had 10 boats out there uh, all tied up or in the same area. So uh, we've got a great, great group of captains. We've all been working together for years. And uh, it's such a great family tradition. You know, like I said, people come back year after year and best description I can give you, it's like an underwater Easter egg. I agree with you completely. Agree with you completely. Can't describe it any better than that. Usually, you know, waist or chest deep water, and you just float with the current and reaching down and picking up those dollops of goodness. Yeah, it's so much fun. I mean, you have to like to swim to first. I, I think the, do you remember the first year we went uh, and the guy, you kept mentioning as we were on our way out, does everybody swim? Does everybody swim? And then everybody on the boat said, yeah, we all, we all swim real well. And remember that dude jumped in the water and then yelled at us, I don't swim? And you <laughs> and I looked at each other like, what the f- is going I, I, on? I on the boat that day. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, I do now. I, yeah. ha- I had to hop in the water. So did well, you. Uh, <laughs> It's, you know, it, it really is amazing. Well, I don't know what they think when they go out there. They're going to jump in the boat or what. You do have to get in to get them, you know. And, uh, uh, you know, we do all our boats have uh, six extra sets of gear, mass snorkel fins. You know, uh, people ask me all the time about wearing fins. And my advice is whatever makes it easier. And I always tell people start into the current first. And when you get tired, the current brings you back to the boat. But, yeah. uh not everybody listens, as you know. I <laughs> know. That was the fo- – I remember coming back. Uh, that was at the FOA conference, by the way. Yes, yes. Yes. And I remember coming back, and then I think we discussed, are we allowed to talk about that on the air? And then we waited like four or five weeks after because we thought maybe this guy will be listening to the show, and then we're like, no, no, let's just do this. We need to talk about this. <laughs> well, and, and Sue, I don't know if you'll remember this. One of the other captains, when we were going out that day, he turned and went to the north, and we went out yes. through the south. And as soon as he made that turn, I said to you, there's no way he's getting as much as we are. Yeah. I, I knew because I'm out there every day, you know, twice a day, six days a week usually. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he came in with like we came in with our limit and he came in with like a gallon and a half. Yeah. Now I knew when he went to the north, you know, that that wasn't where they were. Yeah. Okay, now we had the four hour charter for it. You've looked at a bunch of we had a bunch of submissions. A lot of you and I texted about this. People were really trying to get at our heart on the, some of these ones. They oh, were I, really sad. Shocked by the emotions that I that know. Was- wasn't shared with us, you know, 
I wasn't expecting that at all. I don't know about you. No, no, I wasn't either. That's when you texted me. I'm like, I better go read some of them. Uh, <laughs> now you read a bunch of them. Did you pick out? Did you did you pick out a winner? Yeah, it it really was hard choosing one because yeah, there I would have liked to give one to everybody that wrote in, yeah. but the one that really stuck out, so it stuck out in my my mind the most was from uh, Chris Brotherton. Okay. Uh, I have that handy if you'd like me yeah, to read. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to hear it. Uh, yeah, this is from Chris. Uh, it's not the happiest of stories, but I lost my mom 20 years ago on May 3rd in a bad car accident. She was a big fan of being on the water and was in love with dolphins. Every Mother's Day, I make it out to the Gulf. Every single year, I've seen a dolphin. My mom just popping up to say hi. That was the winner. Well, we'll get a, we'll get in touch with him, and he can get out there and have some fun with you. I know it's I know I know we're looking forward to setting up a charter, Sonia Thomas and I, uh, yep. because I mean you have to have your one once a year. You need to see that albino manatee in the water. So that's what I have I have to do for my boy. I'll do it. The albino manatee has become a legend here in Home Pasture. <laughs> We've had so much fun. Well, everybody, you got to go to homeassassinredfish.com if you're interested in going charter fishing or if you're interested in going on a scallop charter. We also have a scallop site. That's homeassassinscallopassociation.com. And there's some great videos on there. Uh, we, we did a cup one a couple years ago with Dark Sizzle and got yeah. some ama- amazing drone footage in it. And I think we got one or two of your videos up on the site as well. Yeah, you can see you can see some of the stuff I've done. It's kind of like the before I knew how to edit, but I still try my best. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. no, there's some great videos up there. Uh, if you got nothing to do, you can go over and watch some uh, great videos of scalloping. Uh, there's a scalloping 101 video for people that haven't done it before. But all of our captains guides are very experienced. We do. Uh, Hands on, in the water, out of the water, whatever, whatever we need to do to help you. And uh, if the scallops are there, we come back with our money. Yeah, all the time. The one thing Red Ed does that I've never seen anyone else, he gets in the water, swims a country ass mile away from you, swims up up current pretty much, and then out of nowhere he glides, uh, swims back at, at you know his pace, and the next thing you know. The worst thing you can do is bet him like I usually do and say, I bet you I can get more than you, which is the dumbest thing I've done the last two times. But he comes back with a bag full and you always like, I've never been on a charter where we didn't have our, our, we didn't get our limit. Yeah. Last season was a rough one. So hopefully we we're back to the old ways again this season. But uh, yeah, there's, there's, and maybe only one or two people that have gotten on the boat with me that have gotten more than me. Um, you know, it doesn't happen often. No. Every, every once in a while I'll get beat, but not, not often. Well, you got, you kind of got to get your eyes used to it. Yeah. Like the first time you go that first, like 30 or 40 minutes, do you yeah. remember me screaming when I finally found one? For that right through the smoke. Yeah. <laughs> you got to condition your eyes what to look for. And, once your eyes know what they look like, it's uh, they're pretty camouflaged yeah. down there, especially if the dark side is up. If the light side's up, they stand out like a sore thumb. But you know that's the toughest part is conditioning your eyes. You know, uh, once you figure it out, it's it's a lot of fun and uh, the and they're, they're they're awesome to eat too. Yeah, it's it's awesome. Okay, everyone, check out his website, homosassaredfish.com. He is the undisputed king of scalloping. He's my boy, Red Ed Brennan. Uh, we appre- I appreciate you being on here, and we'll talk to you. Hopefully, we can do this again soon before scallop season. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully. You're welcome to come in studio if we ever get in studio at this rate. But yeah, I don't you know, think. Enjoyed. Gosh, it's got to be, what, five years I've been coming into the studio. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's always great to see Boo and Les. Yeah. <laughs> the, two, uh, uh, di- the two dinguses, as we like to call them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, or I one just, dingus I, and one good dude. Pardon? I said one dingus and one good dude. Yeah, I miss all you guys, and uh, you know, it, it, you know, any we learn, you know, from what's going on. It's you know, in times like this, 
you know, we, we learn what we really miss. Yeah. You know, and, uh, and you want to, that's it. I think in this kind of time, you kind of find out who your real friends are because, you know, I've reached out to a few pro anglers that have just been, excuse me, dicks. And uh, now I know who they are, and you want to know, I'll never have them on the show because of it. So I really don't care. You find out who your friends are. Okay. Well, it'd be good to see you guys again soon. Yeah. Uh, let's go catch him. Yeah, for sure. Everyone, check out his website, Red Ed. I'll talk to you soon. Thank you, man. Peace. Thanks. Right. He is arguably one of the, the nicest dudes in the whole world, and the man can fish. The man can fish. Okay, we have a little break here. I don't know. I'm going to put the Optima battery one, and I'm going to call our boy from Florida Tackle Club next. So let's let's watch this Optima battery commercial, and I'll see you back in uh, like 15, 16 seconds. Hopefully. Well, I got to learn how to drag and drop, I guess. It's one thing to call yourself the ultimate power source. It's another thing to prove it. The all-new Optima Yellow Top with Pure Flow technology with up to three times the battery life. Unsurpassed performance built to fit today's vehicles. Optima, the ultimate power source. Let's hope I can get a hold of, of Victor from Florida Tackle Club because he has some great, some great stuff going on. Hold on, I need to get some water. Ah. Uh. I just want to say thank you for everyone that's that's on here and participating. If there's a question that you want to ask, by all means, you can ask. I'll continue to try to get a hold of Vic right now uh, from Florida Tackle Club. Up, oh, oh, I think I got him. Hold on a second. Hopefully, I have him. Hey, Steve. I don't see you yet, Vic. How uh, I see, I hear you, but I don't see you. All right. Hold Let's on a see. second. There you go. How's it going? <laughs> Hold on. I, I, I've i learned this software a lot better since the last time I was on here. Look, watch uh, this. Me too. I think that you want to know what's weird? The picture I found of you, you have, you've you lost weight and you have a beard. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I have lost weight. And I used to have a, a pretty gnarly looking beard, but um, my wife finally had it with it. So she was like, you got to get rid of this. And Oh uh, yeah, it's funny. <laughs> yeah. How are you, man? How's things? I'm, I'm great. Uh, someone just mentioned hand sanitizer, and, and <laughs> as soon as they put hand sanitizer on, I had to, I had to hit the hand sanitizer. Nice. <laughs> uh, uh, if you don't know, he uh, Vic is Victor's part of Florida Tackle Club, but what I think is the best box on the market. Thank you. Uh, because I think you, I, I love that you customize it for the person who is doing it. How, how was uh? And it says y'all better check out what they're doing there on your little screen thing. Um, <laughs> tell everybody a little bit about how you started Florida Tackle Club. Yeah, sure. Yeah, so um, I had the idea about six years ago. I um, I was giving some advice to some friends. They're asking me, what, what do you fish with? What are some lures we can use that'll work? And, you know, we go to the big store and, um, you know, I'd show them a couple of things. And it was really fun. And, and that... Um, that time of life, I was thinking, well, that was really cool. What can I do, um, you know, to do that as a business? And I thought it was a subscription because I had a friend who did uh, like a um, beer of the month club and I uh, thought that'd be cool to do. So I looked it up and there was a couple that existed back then, um, two, two you know, the big ones that existed. And, um, and then I kind of, you know, was like, well, let me, let me do some other things. We moved away, we came back. And then finally last year I said, you know what, I'm going to follow this dream. I'm going to make it happen. Um, and I contacted uh, a captain by the name of Scott Bannero, who is my fishing mentor, um, or one of my fishing mentors and, and asked him if he would be involved, um, giving me some advice on, on what works in his area. And he agreed. And really from there on, it, it gave me the, uh, really inspiration to get it all together. Yeah. Um, and I've had a lot of help along the way from, from friends and family. And I'm really grateful to, um, especially the captains. Um, who gave me advice on, and uh, the whole team, we, we, you know, work together to put stuff in the box that works um, and that captains use. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of the short version of, of how it all started. I think one of the things you guys do is that you're not putting, you're putting, first off, you put quality products in the box. The Thanks. second thing that you guys do is you're not, like, getting stuff from 32 years ago. I mean, yeah. uh, you're putting newer stuff in, the Nomad stuff is 
is really wonderful. You've got the new dart spins and all sorts of great stuff um, in the box that really help you learn about a new product, but at the same time allow you to use that product to cut, go catch more fish, which is wonderful. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, we um, we really do try to do that, um, put new stuff in, and also the tried and true lures too. Like so, for example, like you know Johnson Spoon, like Gold Spoon, those go in the box. Like uh, Gulp, Berkeley Gulp. Yeah. Um, you know, stuff that's been around for a while, but people use it and it's, they still catch fish. But I think another cool part of these subscriptions um, in Florida Tackle Club is you do get to try new stuff, um, and that's something that I really pride our company in doing is sending out. Uh, new products. Um, and, you know, each box usually has at least a, a two or maybe even more new products, sometimes three, sometimes it's four. Um, and it's a really neat way to work with the manufacturers that we have built relationships with uh, to get that stuff out there uh, so that people can try it out and, you know, use something new. Because uh, again, that's the fun part about lures. I mean, if it, you know, if that wasn't part of it, like the new stuff, then honestly, I mean, I'd probably throw uh, only a few lures and live bait, you know, it's, yeah. it's the fun part is, is trying new stuff and catching fish on new lures. I think that's a really neat way of, of um, just challenging yourself and doing something a little different. So, yeah, yeah, I agree completely. The boxes, the, I, I have yet to be disappointed in one thing. That you, you, you're probably Thanks. one of the few boxes that everything went on or in the tackle box. See, I can when I do those openings, I say, well, is it going to go in my tackle box or is it going to go in the giveaway box? And yeah. of all the stuff, I think you're like a hundred percent have have just went in the tackle box, which is which is wonderful. Yeah, that that's been really cool to see, and I love watching the videos that you do because I'm always you know really wondering how it's gonna go. You know, it's yeah. uh, you know I I know uh, and cool to see too, like you know your your expression, the surprise because um, you know and and that's a neat really neat thing, and you know I love sending these boxes out with the team to different people. And, um, you know, I especially love hearing back from people about what they thought about the box. So your show is awesome and congrats on it. And the live at the cost has been awesome. Um, but it's been really cool. Like another thing too, I love is, you know, sometimes subscribers will email the team and they'll let us know how it's going. And the thing I love the most is when I get an email from, um, a family, a family with kids. Cause I know that they're taking uh, their kids fishing and they're building lifelong memories. And mm -hmm. to me, that's what this is really all about. Mm -hmm. It's about connection. It's not about um, really anything else that someone could guess it is about for me. It's about encouraging people to get outside, encouraging people to go fishing together. Um, and to, to use the box is kind of the driving force for that. Um, so yeah, I, I love seeing the unboxings and I love hearing back from subscribers about how they like the box. So with iCast being, you know, being gone, mm -hmm. how does this, how is this going to affect what you guys, uh, what, for tackle club does this year well it, it it was disappointing to hear but i understand you know the, the people that made the decisions to trust them you know that's why they do what they do um but you know we had some big plans at icast really with um you know just seeing everybody in person it, really the big plus of icast and last year was my first time this is you know this will be almost one year being uh in business uh at, really at icast we launched right before icast uh, yeah. last year so it's a lot faster and easier to talk to everybody um, in person. Yes. Um, you know, calling somebody on the phone and then getting a call back, even though the manager actually we work with are great at communicating. Uh, just, you know, life happens and sometimes it takes a while. So ICAST is great in that you can get everything done um, in so much shorter of a time. Mm -hmm. And also the new products, like the new products to be able to see them um, and in, in person and then plan out the, the box for the whole year you know, ICAST is really integral to that. Um, but we'll still make it happen. And, you know, we, I still talk to all the manufacturers we work with, um, and, you know, about what's, what's coming up, what's new, uh, and to see how we can, um, you know, get all that stuff in the box for our subscribers. Yeah. You need to make the boxes a little bigger, by the way. Yeah. We're working on that actually. <laughs> we actually <laughs> I think <laughs> I've told you this yeah. several times. Yeah, you have, right. We have, um, those, that size box, um, you know, we have, we've sold a lot of boxes, thankfully. And, you know, I'm very thankful to everyone's support, uh, but we have a lot of them. So we oh, have yeah. to kind of cycle through those boxes, but we do have a new, uh, a new thing in the works for the fall and it, it uh, features a, a big box. And that's about all I'll say okay. about it, but it's going to be really cool. I'm and you also have it. right now you're doing a lure giveaway. Tell everybody we are. about that. Yeah. Yeah. So we started this, um, last week. We're doing this every week. I like to do it. 
you know, all year long, we'll see how long it goes. But uh, it's a lure of the week. We feature a lure that we've sent out to subscribers. And we do a Tackle Tip Tuesday that explains how to use the lure. And we, um, you know, partner with the manufacturer or with our captains to uh, do that tackle tip. And then there's a little contest, you know, a follow, um, you know, follow regular giveaway type stuff. But also, if people send in pictures that they've caught on that lure or send in pictures that they've caught a fish on that lure with FTC gear, they get all these bonus entries. Nice. So this week's really cool in that we're doing uh, the dart spin. So I'll just hold it up. The dart spin yes. uh, is the lure of the week. And we've uh, also partnered with uh, Thrasher Lures and the Thrash Can products. Yep. And um, uh, Zach. Hold on, you got I... Thrash Can! Thrash Can! Thrash Can! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Zach and I met at iCast. Oh, yeah. At, uh, at the Tackle year. Webs booth. I was there. Yeah, yeah. That was actually a, a, it's a funny story behind that. I'll, I'll tell the quick version. But um, Zach and I met at a Tom Rowland workout. And I don't know if you've ever seen Tom Rowland workouts before, but. I just wanted to meet Tom Rowland. Like, yeah. so he, the way he does it, I, I cast is anybody can go even in, you know, people live in the neighborhood. We met him at a fire station parking lot at five 30 in the morning and you can do this workout with him. Yes. And it's all like kind of CrossFit stuff. And I hadn't worked out in like 10 years, <laughs> but I just wanted to meet Tom Rowland yeah. so bad. Cause I, I'd watched his show forever and I was dying. Like <laughs> literally I thought I was going to die. Like Tom Rowland <laughs> went up like a whole basement full of stairs, did all these crazy stuff. And then when we're supposed to take a break, he's doing like a handstand all the way down the parking lot and back. I mean, he's just a beast. Yeah. So anyway, I met Zach at that workout and then I said, Hey, I'll come by your booth and say what's up during the show. And I came by and then I met you and I uh, saw Mike and Marcella and, um, you know, it was really cool to, to how that all worked out. So yeah, Zach did a really cool video, uh, back actually in October where he did an FTC box challenge and he caught a uh, fish on every single, um, lure in the box. And it was our saltwater box, which, want to remind everybody we do have a saltwater box and really we actually have more saltwater subscribers than freshwater our saltwater box is why i started this whole thing and the freshwater thing we decided to do too and, and i love the freshwater side too um, but he did an awesome video so you know i thought it was really cool to be able to um to do this giveaway with him with a band of anglers and um you know people can win four uh two two packs of the dart spins mm -hmm. a whole package from uh, the thrash can products and then also this hat that i'm wearing not this specific one a new one yeah. um uh for florida tackle club so yeah you know those of you watching please uh you know give us a follow um you know send in your fishing pictures if you have them for the dart spin and uh and stay tuned because we're gonna have really cool giveaways coming up too next week's giveaway is is awesome as well i'll just give a little preview it has to it's fresh water and it has to do with top water nice. so it's going to be a neat giveaway too I have fished the dart spin probably mm. as much as Patrick Sabeel. Nice. That's the God's honest truth. Wow. That's a lot. <laughs> I have done um, like 70, 80 videos on how mm. that, how to rig that properly and how to rig it with Patrick. They nice. haven't really come out. I guess I, I guess I probably could get in trouble for saying it, but who cares? Um, but there are endless amounts of way to fish that lure from, weedless to uh mm. jigs using it as a trailer even using it and putting a weight on the end where the blade is mm -hmm. so that it goes downward and then doing a fast jerk up with your rod tip to make just the blade work it's there's and not to mention they you can stretch them for a mile and they they don't bust so yeah they're awesome yeah, yeah that, that's i totally agree i've actually fished with the darts a ton ever since i cast and um I've caught, you know, freshwater and saltwater, oh, yeah. caught all kinds of species of fish. And, and what you said about the durability is so true, too. Like, um, around where I live, we have some exotics like, you know, snakeheads and peacock bass and stuff like that. Um, and I'll tell you what, like, caught a ton of snakeheads and the lure wasn't even busted up. Like, yeah. it, you just keep casting that thing. You know, it's, it's an awesome lure. I know, I, I know at one point in time last year, there was a guy that caught 125 bass before he had to replace the bait because at 125 yeah. it was finally beat up enough that he was like okay i believe it yeah, yeah it's it's unbelievable well everyone yeah. you need to go check out these the new giveaways and and all the stuff you need you need to get yourself this box it's phenomenal either the salt water or the fresh water i just happened to get the the fresh water because well we you know we did that unboxing with mike and i competing against each other yeah. 
And then, of course, I stole his. He got your box, and then I stole his chatterbait, yeah. his thunder cricket, and then he lost yeah. because the lure that I stole caught all the fish. Right, that was funny. Which was just made it more, you know, it just showed how great the box you had because I didn't catch crap on anything that I got in the other box. Yeah, well, thanks. Yeah, we we uh, we really are uh, proud of the box, and and uh, it's been awesome being able to do it and. I really am thankful to you guys for, um, you know, for subscribing and for ordering the box. Um, and then even even more so doing the unboxing. It's been really awesome. So thank you so much. And you'll see, you can go on our Facebook page. He's going to post. You have you do have access, don't you? Yeah, I do. Yeah, okay. I posted uh, the first uh, giveaway, the Strike King one. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he'll, you'll see him on our Facebook page. But you should be a, you should follow them too. You can follow on Instagram and Facebook and and. Be part of that, their whole, everything that they're doing. They have a great box and great people. And and not to mention, you actually donate some of the proceeds to, like, Wounded Warrior Projects and stuff like that, don't you? We do, yeah. We are um, we work with uh, Heroes on the Water. Yeah. And so all the Florida chapters of Heroes on the Water, we, we make donations um, to support that. Uh, we also work with um, Moat Marine out on the West Coast. And we actually, we work with specific events on that one. We do the... Um, kids events. So we did a really neat kids event in the fall. We we're supposed to do one in the spring, but all this happened. Yeah. Uh, but we did, you know, an event where all these fifth graders came from uh, like a high needs neighborhood and they learned how to fish. And that was really cool to be able to do that. Um, and then we also uh, work with another group called the Marine Education Initiative. And they're all about promoting conservation um, within the whole world, actually, but mainly based in Florida and the Caribbean. So those are the three nonprofits we work with. And we're we're actually looking to, to partner with a couple more in the near future. That's so, yeah, we um, like I said, this is about community. It's about, um, you know, connection with each other and, and nature and, you know, learning about yourself through fishing. Uh, that's why I do what I do. That's why I, I started this company. That's why um, our team is involved and all the captains we work with, um, you know, same thing. They, they love, um, you know, same things we do, have the same values and the same core beliefs. So, um, yeah, that's uh it's That's really great, again. Man. I'm grateful. Yeah, thank you. I'm really grateful to to um to be able to do it. That's awesome. Well, hopefully you get to get out there and go fishing a little bit too at the same time. And yeah, and uh, not hopefully the this whole thing goes. Hopefully we get over this thing and you know we can start back up and do things right. But you're still sending out boxes either any way you look at it. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah, we we you know we're a small startup, family startup, so. Um, you know, we actually scaled down uh, to just one right now. It's just me uh, doing all the stuff with the boxes just for social distancing and all that. We decided to do that. Um, and we actually, thankfully, this has been one of the busiest months we've ever had. So coincidence, I'm the only one doing it now. Yeah, it's the biggest month we've ever had. But, <laughs> but yeah, it's been, uh, it's, um, we're still open. We're, we're still sending boxes. If anybody wants to sign up, uh, we have a code that's a longstanding code with uh, Florida Fishing Radio. It's FFR5. And you can get five dollars off any order and free shipping. So yep. if anybody wants to sign up, please use that code. Awesome, man. Well, I appreciate it, and we'll have to do this again. And I hope you and the family stay healthy. And thank you for everything that you're doing with all the all the kids and the Wounded Warrior Project, uh, the Wounded uh, Heroes on the Water, and all that. We appreciate that. And like I tell everybody, if, this is a box you need to have. The Florida Tackle Club box is phenomenal. Phenomenal. I'm a subscriber personally. I'm a subscriber. Yeah, you actually need to sign up against. I know. Steve. I'm going to do. A, I think. Do I? I do. We're three uh, you're in doing a row. one in May. Yeah, you did three, and now yes. your your next one's supposed to be in May. But uh, I'll sign text up, you man. my uh, my credit card information after this. Okay. So everyone, well, go check you. them out, and thank you, man, for coming on the show. And I'll talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Thank Later, you. Bro. Bye. Take care. Bye. If you missed it, go out there and check out Florida Tackle Club. Victor's a great dude. Humble. Yes. One of the best in the world and just does it all. Hopefully you guys enjoyed episode four. Man, four of these we've done. From live from the Casa or whatever that says right there. The code for that is FFR5. You'll save $5 and you'll get free shipping. Um, like I said earlier, it was great to hear about Aaron and the, the Shaw news. And we'll do this again. Um, we'll do this again next week. I've already got people... 
scheduled and lined up and i'm gonna try to reach out to a bunch more people but thank you guys for watching fishing florida radios live from the casa i really do appreciate it make sure you guys get out there go fishing hopefully god is blessing you uh, and keeping you safe and remember a few things take a kid fishing get your fish on we will see you next wednesday you're welcome red cheers guys